So do you have time for like a little quick story? Oh, absolutely. Okay, the first all day. The first night. Uh huh. Okay, so I get into the car uh, with this guy. I will not name his name. <laughs> uh, just I won't name it. But I, I get in the car with him, and he tells me two things. He said, number one, he said, um, when something happens, uh-huh. okay, you stay back. Do not okay. run and get into it because I'm. I want to take care of you. Sure. And, and, and I, that was reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Second thing he says, I want to show you this little button on the car. Okay. And the, but there was a radio and there was an old, um, Chevy actually. It wasn't, they hadn't gone to Crown Vicks. It was the old Chevy Impala, uh-huh. probably a 72 model, 71 uh-huh. model. Yeah. And there was a hidden button under there. And he said, he said, reach on there. Can you feel it? I said, yes, sir. I see it. And he said, he said, number one, you have to call me. Yes, sir. He said, he said, but number two, um, push that button. So I push it and something clicks by my head uh-huh. and it is the shotgun release. Oh. And he said, do you know how to use the shotgun? I said, uh-huh. yes, sir. I said, I'm, I'm a squirrel hunting deer hunt with a 12 gauge. He, he says, it's a pump. Do you know? I said, yes, sir. Uh-huh. He said, I'm not going to get it out. He said, I just want to tell you if I get in trouble, you get that shotgun out. Oh, there we go. No training. No, no, <laughs> no waivers. Yeah. So the first night, that was my briefing. We're going in there. We get a call officer uh, in a fight uh-huh. with somebody. I don't, you know, of course, this is, I was 17. Sure. But um, we're driving the wrong way on a four lane going up a exit going, I don't know, 115 miles an hour. <laughs> I have a cool cigarette. I'm smoking a cool <laughs> cigarette without seat belts. He's got a cigarette sticking out the side of his mouth. We slide up to this thing. He jumps out, leaves the door open. Run. He has a slapper. Do you know what a slapper is? No. Okay, a slapper is a piece of leather with lead in it. Oh, like a It's like a black sap. Jack. It's a blackjack. That's one word for it. But a slapper has actually a handle on it okay. and a big deal of lead on the end of it. He he launched himself off the ground, probably three. Well, okay, he's a big old boy, so two feet off the ground, <laughs> and landed this slapper on this young man's head that was oh, fighting no. this policeman. Knocked him cold as a wedge, <laughs> drug him back to the car. I'm standing there trembling. <laughs> sure. I've never. This is. I was raised in a pastor's home. Yeah. And I'm trembling. And first and, time. And for, this is the first. This is the first four hours. Yeah. Okay. And he says, are you okay? I literally, I remember what I said. I said, I'm not only okay. I can't believe they actually pay you guys to (laughs) to get to do this. I said, I'm going to do this for a living. He said, okay. (laughs) He said, that's reasonable. Working as a minister, working as an undercover cop, Everything that Bruce Bielan has done has been cool and heroic. And that's why on today's 15 Minutes, let's listen to Bruce Bielan and his many stories. Listen to The Dale Wiley Show and 15MinuteMiracles.com. As a child, I really respected it and thought that was a very cool thing. Sure. And uh, Roy Rogers was right. my hero, absolutely. Right. Um I didn't even know who John Wayne was until I was older. I'm serious. Yeah. I really did. Roy Rogers to me, uh, and Dale Evans and the whole, you know, and all his movies, all of his shows. And so, um, I, uh, I, I remember thinking and literally I was living in El Dorado. So I was five. Uh-huh. I remember being in the yard and knowing that I would go into the military, okay. knowing that I was going to be a policeman, okay. and knowing that I was going to preach the gospel. Really? I remember that then. Uh-huh. So I don't know what that means now. I don't know if that's a spiritual <laughs> thing or yeah. a hard-headed thing. Right. Because, you know, my the Brumleys are known for being hard-headed. <laughs> so that's just the truth. Yeah. And so <laughs> when did you start doing law enforcement? I became a what was called in those days a... Law enforcement, it was called a police cadet program okay. in 1975. Okay. They literally let us wear uniforms. I was in high school. Okay. They let us wear uniforms. It was different than the police uniforms. We had a khaki uniform. Uh-huh. Theirs was a, a deep navy. Sure. 
And uh, we wore little belts. We could carry pepper spray and a baton. <laughs> Can you imagine the liability <laughs> behind yes. that? So do you have time for like a little quick story? Oh, absolutely. Okay. The first, all day. the first night. Uh-huh. Okay. So I get into the car uh, with this guy. I will not name his name. <laughs> uh, just, I won't name it. But when, when I get in the car with him and he tells me two things. He said, number one, he said, um, when something happens, uh-huh. okay, you stay back. Do okay. not run and get into it because I'm. I want to take care of you. Sure. And, and, and I, that was reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Second thing he says, I want to show you this little button on the car. Okay. And the, but there was a radio and there was an old, um, Chevy actually. It wasn't, they hadn't gone to crown Vix. It was the old Chevy Impala, uh-huh. probably a 72 model, 71 uh-huh. model. Yeah. And there was a hidden button under there. And he said, he said, reach on there. Can you feel it? I said, yes, sir. I see it. And he said, he's said, number one. You have to call me. Yes, sir. He said, he said, but number two, um, push that button. So I push it and something clicks by my head uh-huh. and it is the shotgun release. Oh, and he said, do you know how to use the shotgun? I said, uh-huh. yes, sir. I said, I'm, I'm a squirrel hunting deer hunt with a 12 gauge. He, he says, it's a pump. Do you know? I said, yes, sir. Uh-huh. He said, I'm not going to get it out. He said, I just want to tell you if I get in trouble, you get that shotgun out. Oh, there we go. No training. No, no, <laughs> no waivers. Yeah. So the first night, that was my briefing. We're going in there. We get a call officer uh, in a fight uh-huh. with somebody. I don't, you know, of course, this is, I was 17. Sure. But um, we're driving the wrong way on a four lane going up a exit going, I don't know, 115 miles an hour. <laughs> I have a cool cigarette. I'm smoking a cool <laughs> cigarette without seat belts. He's got a cigarette sticking out the side of his mouth. We slide up to this thing. He jumps out, leaves the door open. Run. He has a slapper. Do you know what a slapper is? No. Okay, a slapper is a piece of leather with lead in it. Oh, like a It's like a black sap. Jack. It's a blackjack. That's one word for it. But a slapper has actually a handle on it okay. and a big deal of lead on the end of it. He he launched himself off the ground, probably three. Well, okay, he's a big old boy, so two feet off the ground, <laughs> and landed this slapper on this young man's head that was oh, fighting no. this policeman. Knocked him cold as a wedge, <laughs> drug him back to the car. I'm standing there trembling. <laughs> sure. I've never. This is. I was raised in a pastor's home. Yeah. And I'm trembling. And first and, and for, This is the first. <laughs> this is the first four hours. Yeah. Okay. And he says, are you okay? I literally, I remember what I said. I said, I'm not only okay. I can't believe they actually pay you guys to (laughs) to get to do this. I said, I'm going to do this for a living. He said, okay. (laughs) He said, that's reasonable. That's good. So my old supervisor, when I was a police cadet, was now the chief down in Camden. He sent word. He said, son, when you're ready to go to work, let's go to work. So right. they hired me. We moved to Camden. I was there for the next eight years. I worked. I was police for three years and went to their uh, detective unit, worked two years as a detective, okay. worked my first homicide. Um, very, um, we crack cocaine hit South Arkansas while I was in the military uh-huh. about, I'm going to say about 80, uh-huh. 81. Right. I went to work there in 80. I moved back to uh, Camden in 84. Okay. And it, it changed Dale, the whole fabric of I life I there. Sure see that. There was Camden was growing amazingly. All the defense contracts, everything was going on. It got close to, I'm going to say, 19 to 20,000 people. Uh-huh. They are wondering if it's going to break 10,000 people in the 2020 census. Oh, wow. The whole county has lost probably 10,000 people. It is unbelievable. Yeah. But anyway, the, uh, we got back down there, and as a detective, I learned uh, an enormous amount very quickly. Patrol there... Okay, being being a patrolman there in 1985, uh-huh. and then in 1993 being a patrolman in Nixa. Uh-huh. 
because uh-huh. we'll get there in a minute. Right. Was the difference between Chicago and Mayberry um, ish? <laughs> I worked some bad stuff in Nixa. Sure. It, it's just under the surface. Right. But in in Camden, it was continual. I worked stabbings. Wow. Shootings. I mean, multiple. Uh, I, I worked one of the ones that I love to tell, and I don't know if. Please tell. Well, I love this story because um, I used it over and over when I was a, I taught at the police academy. I still do, uh-huh. but we got a call, and I was barely out of field training. Okay. So I, this was still in '85, right? And we got a call, and a man was laying in the front yard been shot multiple times wow. holes all in and we're trying to keep him i was with a guy named gary vaughn great policeman great guy uh-huh. gary is he's what much more experienced at that point at civilian police he'd been in the army and had gotten sure. out and and was working and he's we're trying to hold we, we got our first aid kids trying to keep this guy from bleeding out wow. and he's bleeding out the other end then we get him i mean he is bleeding everywhere uh-huh. holes literally all in it as we worked the case we found out that his uh Girl Paramore, sure, um, was uh, legally blind, okay, and had a, a thirty two pistol and had hit him from like seven feet. <laughs> had only missed, had emptied the pistol and missed him only twice. Really? So I used to use that. Say, so, you know, I worked for the, a blind woman. Shoot better than some of you guys. Yeah. Um, when it got time to testify, that he refused to press charges. Really? Said he loved her and oh. didn't, didn't want her to go to prison. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> that wasn't that did not happen once while I was there, or twice, or three <laughs> times. That happened many times. Wow. But, um, another one was a guy that uh, got stabbed in the neck by his paramour. I'll never forget when I investigate that why he got stabbed. Okay. Um, he was going to go fishing, and she was tired of him fishing. <laughs> And uh, I thought, you know, I'm glad my wife has a little more tolerance. Exactly. Yeah. Stuff like alcohol works. helps. Yes. Al- alcohol helps on that, though. That lowers that. T- yes. Anyway, so. But no, I, then I uh, actually in 1990, they contacted me. I had been to a couple of schools at the law enforcement academy there in Camden and uh, had was a uh, certified instructor. And they actually recruited me to come out there and teach for two years. Oh, wow. And I left active duty and went into that, which you're still a cop, but you don't really do anything except well, teach. Well, tell me about that job. That sounds super interesting. It was very interesting. Um, crack problem. Oh, really? Just outside in the county, but just outside the city. I mean, it was... And there was also there was also a county line there, so people would flee across the county. And so I was there for a year, and the sheriff came to me and said, um, "I really need somebody to work full time for the task force." Okay. So I actually worked undercover for a period there. Oh wow! And Dale, I was interviewed by um, a newspaper. I don't know when it was in the nineties or two thousands. Sure. And is it, this was a kid interviewing me, uh-huh. okay? And he said, well, you know, what do you think has really prepared you the most out of everything you've done? Uh-huh. What's prepared you the most for what you do now? Okay. And I told him, I said, son, I, I thought I knew everything. Uh-huh. Until you get in a car uh-huh. and buy crack cocaine through the window of that car. Uh-huh. and work street dealers and have people in the car with you that their whole life has been decimated by dope. Uh-huh. Decimated. Right. There is nothing left. They've lost everything. Until you are around people on a regular basis that sell their bodies every day right. to get a rock of cocaine. Right. And you, I said, I understand desperateness. Sure. I understand brokenness. And I was actually about to take a ministry position, and he was asking me about that. And I said, you know, what the the common denominator of the people that I see that come out of that lifestyle is Christ. My interview with Bruce Bielan was extremely interesting, and I invite you to go to dalewileyshow.com and also to listen to 15minutemiracles.com.